Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Outlaw Pro Outcast. As you can see, I am back in the chair. And the reason for this, I have a special guest today. So, welcome back, Rob Hughes. Welcome back to your show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know it was going to be this quick that I, I, I get I kicked out of my seat. I know, I know, <laughs> already. So, um, it's a special edition. Uh, anything particularly been happening in your life this well, last sort of couple of weeks i've, I've been busy <laughs> mate. i've been busy uh, yeah. yes well what can we say world champions uh, yes. again uh, again just yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's not i didn't think uh, i i spoke to some of the guys yesterday when yeah. they came to the shop to to drop some of their kit off and uh you could already tell it, it, it's not sunk in for them yet no no it's it's only just sinking in it's it's such an emotional yeah. and emotionally exhausting period. Yeah. When you like fishing for England anyway, absolutely drains yeah. the whole life out of you when you do it because we put so much into it. Yeah. Uh, I remember at the World Games in South Africa, we 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 came off yeah. at the end of it, and the feeder team were staying in the same place as us. Yeah. And they just said, "You look like you've just come back from the front line of a war." Exactly. You know, everybody yeah. was just drained, knackered. It's seventy-two hours of physical, mental, and yeah. emotional just it drains everything out of you i think so, i think that the whole idea for, for this this thing because up until eight o'clock last night we weren't even going to do this and 10 o'clock next morning we're doing it yeah um we, we went out for dinner last night and um i i, I and the, the reason we thought of this is we spoke nearly every hour while you were over in hungary you know of what's happening what's going on oh my god that's terrible that's brilliant and amazing and i felt really really privileged i was in that position to be able to have that dialogue with you and then as as the the, the match was unfolding in the last sort of day those conversations became very intense of yes. what was going on you know emotionally physically very intense and then we were talking last night and you were telling me about a story i just save it I said, don't tell me anymore don't tell me anymore because everybody should yeah. know this because this is how cool this is so what i want to do is i just want to, i don't want you to talk i don't i don't want me to talk I, I want you to sort of start us from the start almost when the planning was for the the intensity of the planning to go to hungary and some of the stories because some of the ones i've the little ones i've heard i thought that is absolutely brilliant you know it's not the the illicit the, the literal classic you've gone on facebook and oh you've seen oh, oh we've now moved up the table and we've won yeah. the story behind it is the, unbelievable well the backstory is always the main story isn't it you it know is. what, what you what you see on on social media or in news reports about anything at all is just the headline you know you don't see the the editorial behind what's happened there yeah. um we weren't even supposed to be in hungary we were supposed to be in ukraine uh well, so this world championships was supposed to be in ukraine it was supposed to be in ukraine two years ago so right. we've gone over me and carl um pitcher carl is the captain this year me and carl have gone over to do a recce in ukraine yeah and we've prepped ourselves for fishing in ukraine and then obviously COVID happened and Ukraine was bounced back and then it was bounced back. And this year it was agreed that it was still going to be in Ukraine. And obviously the wars happened over there. So uh, we weren't going to have another world championships. You know, the last one that we competed in was back in 2019. Mm. That was the World Games in South Africa. It happened in January. So we've been nearly three years without an event. Mm. So everybody's a little bit ring rusty. Mm. And... You know, we don't compete in England the same way that they compete overseas. The Romanians are competing all the time. The Lithuanians are competing all the time. The Croatians are competing all the time. We don't do that over in the UK. We haven't got that style and ethos of fishing. Yeah. So we're quite ring rusty. So there was an awful lot of prep, probably more prep for this one than we've we've done on, on other events. Yeah. But the prep was done remotely. So oh we've gone out physically and prepped to fish in Ukraine. And then the venue's been changed to Hungary. Yeah. Fortunately, there was World Champs in Hungary back in 2017, so we'd been there before, so we know quite a bit about it. On and that lake? On the same on lake, lake, yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So, so everybody that was there, you know, we'd already been there before. Yeah. Uh, Ukraine won it then, we knew they were going to be very strong. Mm. Back in August, there was a, a practice competition, so there's always a big practice competition before a World Championships mm. that nations can go to. Unfortunately, for primarily busy reasons, we couldn't go there as well. Mm. But you remember, you and I were fishing in France at the time. Oh, yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I was quite yeah. antisocial at the time because yeah. I got my fa face glued to the phone. Yeah. I was watching the match in, in Lithuania. Uh, sorry, I was watching the match in Hungary, yeah. watching what was going on, and Lithuania were immensely strong over there. Croatia yeah. were. Um, you know, um, I, I think Croatia The ones were. you thought would be, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's... there's yeah. The, the, the nations that compete, you know, this was the biggest ever 
yeah. World Championships. There yeah. were 28 nations that were yeah. taking part. Yeah. You know, there were some that couldn't go because they'd been banned, Belarus and Russia. Mm. There were some that couldn't go for financial reasons or whatever reasons, Austria, Switzerland and Wales. Mm. So it could have been over 30, but it was 28 nations. Now, that is massive, mm. Smithy. Uh, that's, it's, it's huge. Mm. Opening ceremony, you know, each team has between 10 and 20 people in it. So the opening ceremony, they were in the region of three and a half, four hundred people there. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is a fishing event. Yeah. It, it's it, when you see it on this scale, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, but just winding back, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the prep. I'm looking at, at what we've learned mm. from going back to 2017. We've been there once. We've had a crack at it. Mm. What did we learn? Where did we go right? Where did we go wrong? Mm. And the key things with, with fishing at this level is the most important things to remember are where you went wrong. Mm. Not where you went right, yeah. where you went wrong. Because make no mistake, at this level, there are teams that will not make a mistake. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. everybody or most of them are pretty good. But there are some that will not make a mistake. Now, if you're one of those ones that don't make a mistake, you've got a chance of being on the podium. Mm. You make one mistake, even if it's that big. Mm immediately you're playing catch up yeah so there are things that 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 resonated i was watching the weather patterns um so i'm studying the weather from 2017 mm. and i'm studying the weather from 2022 in the month run up to it not on the day people look at that but i'm not interested just on on the day what i want to know is why things are ending up where they are and this is something that a lot of people don't think about with mm. with competition as well you know we have spotters on these events that are watching the other uh, the other teams and somebody coming up to me and telling me that France have just caught six fish is pointless. Don't don't tell me that. I don't need to know yeah. that yeah. because I can see that from the results. What I need to do is know what they did six hours ago Which that led caused to, them to yeah. catch yeah, yeah, six yeah. fish, and we can react and engage accordingly mm. to what's happening. So, you know, you can say you can say the prep for this. We've we've won this event over the last seven days, but the preparation for this event probably started eleven years ago. Mm. which is the first time I was introduced to a boilie called a soluble. <clears throat> and we were fishing over in Romania. Uh, me and Mark Bartlett went over to a, 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 a pro event over in Romania. We fished over there and we were introduced to a soluble boilie. Mm. Now, we'd never seen them before, didn't really know what they were, but basically it's a boilie that breaks down. Mm. I had used them previously in the World Cup Cup, obviously in 1996, because Nashi bought the ball pellet out, yeah. which is a slightly different thing, a, a soluble pellet to a soluble boilie. Mm. But the ball pellet was the same sort of thing. So we won the World Cup in 1996 mm. using this method. The Romanians then redeveloped it into a boily version from a pellet version, yeah. which I then saw in 2011. And we've seen just how effective this style of fishing is mm. on certain venues. Yes. You know, and, and this is the key. These, these tactics don't always work on all venues. They work on certain venues. Mm. And the key is knowing which venue they work on. Right. So 11 years training using these products working out how this this bait works working out what the weather patterns are listening back to 2017 coming in with a game plan putting it all together and thinking right, right. of all the information that we've got now this is actually the way that we're going to approach this event yeah uh so <laughs> i suppose that's that's the key thing this this event was one in preparation right you know okay. without without any shadow yeah, yeah, doubt yeah. we put a game plan together and my my job within the team is to um Firstly, put the right tools in the box, and yeah. secondly, come up with the strategy. Yeah, working with the guys, of course, but coming up with a strategy that we think will be the one that will go forward to to win it. Yeah. Now, France are very, very good at zig rig fishing and spotting pellets. Yeah, uh, the Romanians are very good at soluble bait fishing and fishing long range. We're particularly good at, at, at PVA bag, solid bag fishing. You know, there are certain methods that fit certain nations. Yes. Yeah. But if the venue doesn't work for that method, you've got to adapt yourself to Absolutely. that method yeah, rather yeah. than trying to use your method better. Yeah, yeah, quite. So, you know, it's a it's a real learning curve. Yeah. Uh, through, uh, I suppose, experience and um, just being very aware of your surroundings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as as to where to go. Okay. So that was a long way of answering. Where? How do you yeah, prep yeah, for yeah, something yeah. like this? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you you. You you prep for it. You got there. Yes. It, it's obviously quite daunting seeing twenty eight teams. Teams. So you've got six people fishing on each team. So it, it's it's yes. a hell of an event. 
at what point does, do we think, right, okay, so we, we know what we're going to do, let's put the game plan into action. You start the match. Yeah. How did the match start? Did it go to plan or not to plan? Was the people you thought were doing well or the people where you thought, well, they will do well, they didn't? What was your thought in, let's say, the first sort of, like 12 hours of that? Well, the, 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 the match is 72 hours, first and foremost. Yes. Uh, yeah. it, it, it works on the... There are 11 people in the medal squad. Right. That 11 is made up of three pairs of anglers yep. that fish in section A, section B, section C. So yep. every nation has one pair in each section. Mm. You then have two reserves. Mm. So if you want to sub someone in or out, you can do. Mm -hmm. They might be a pair, so you take one pair out and put a new pair in. They might be individuals. I prefer to be individuals. Mm. So there's eight effectively on the rod squad. There are then two managers, which is myself as the overall mm -hmm. arching manager and Graham maybe as the assistant manager. Yep. And then we have a delegate. That delegate is somebody that will basically run for us, can represent us at meetings, can mm. do other things as mm. well. Um, so that's the eleven, the eleven man squad. Now, what we always the the, the match is seventy two hours long. So what I always like to do is split that match into smaller periods. So effectively, mm. we normally have a three stage approach. Yeah, yeah. So the first stage is let's catch a fish. Mm. You have got four hours at the start of a competition where there may be fish swimming around in front of you that before they get too pressurised, there's a chance of catching them. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of the time there's a quick hit tactic just to try and get a fish on the bank in the mm. first four hours. And if we get one, great, we're on the score sheet, everything's all very nice, happy days. Mm. You know, it's just a nerve settler because mm. the, uh, as soon as you've got a fish on the bank, you know you haven't blanked. Mm. And the worst thing that can happen in a world championships is a blank. Yeah. You're only ever as, uh, as good as your worst section. And if somebody blanks, mm. that's it. You know, you're never going to win anything with a blank. Mm. So we, um, we try and catch a fish quickly. But we knew from previous experience on this that it was going to be a venue that needed a lot of bait. Yeah. And it was the baiting strategy and the type of bait that was our key to success without any shadow of doubt. Mm. So the idea is there's, there's, there's two different types of fish in the lake. There are brand new stocked fish that are between a kilo and a half and three kilo, which, you know, it's an Eastern European venue. It's a put and take lake as well. What yep. that means is that the public can fish it. It's a park lake. So um, the local club put loads of fish in it. And, you know, we don't do it in the UK, but in Eastern Europe, it's very, very common. They'll go along. They'll go with a family on a Sunday. They'll take the barbecue. They'll catch a fish. It might be a kilo and a half. They'll take it out. They'll smash it on the head, shove it on the barbecue. Mm. It's what happens over mm. there. So... As a result, there are lots of these small stocked fish that get put in. Yeah. There are also then the bigger ones that are these sort of 8 to 15, 16, 17 kilo fish. They're the ones that have been in there a long time. Mm. So you can imagine the difference between fishing for stockies yes. and for yeah, fishing yeah, yeah. for old fish. Yeah. So we've got to look at tactically what is the best thing to do. Mm. Do we sit there and do we try and catch 51 and a half to 3 kilo fish? Mm. Or do we try and get the bigger ones and attract those bigger ones? Or is it just purely a case of luck? Yeah. You know, it may yeah. be you just wade through the bites, catch whatever you can. Yeah. But there are distinct strategies between those to, mm. to what works and what doesn't. Mm. Obviously, the fish swim in different places. They're not all going round. They swim in different ways. Mm. So those stock fish will be in certain areas of the lake that they like because they're new to it and they'll tend to group up more because they small fish like to be together. Yeah. The bigger fish tend to be in smaller groups and they're like different areas of the lake. Mm. So immediately then there's so many different variables that you've got to think of mm. about where these fish might be and how we're going to attract them. Yeah. Um, and this is where the soluble boilie approach works very well because the good thing about it is that you can use it as an audible attractor because yep. certainly the stock fish will hear the noise and they would like to move to it. Mm because they're used to food being thrown at them. But secondly, it doesn't feed them so much. The baits break down over a period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're putting smell and food message into the water, yeah. but you're not actually feeding them up that much. Yeah, so it's like within 24 hours, it's almost like ground bait, isn't it? It's like a uh, tiny ball of ground bait. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. The, 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 the way that we've got them, you can time them to, to go at different periods. So, mm. you know, they, they, they might break down between two hours and six hours. If you want one that's a little bit longer, you can take it up to 12 hours. Mm. What you can also do is you can adapt them on the bank so you can treat them. Mm. And by treating them on the bank, if just before you go out you oil them then you can make their breakdown last a lot longer yep. so if I'm giving a lot of things away yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't yeah, realise yeah, I was yeah. going to open my mouth this much <laughs> um, but there are there are little edges that you can get so for example if if you've got a shallow spot in front of you and the, bait, and the fish like to feed on it but they don't like bait going in over the heads mm. then what you do is before you're getting to bite time you oil them up 
So the breakdown period is over six and seven hours. So you've got that bait working for you over a longer yeah, period yeah. of time than a shorter period of time. Yeah. Um, if they don't mind it going over, then actually you want them to break down really quickly. So you want the two hour breakdown. So what you do is you water them beforehand. So oh, you're already okay. starting the break the breakdown process on the core on the outside. So as long as they'll get out there, they'll break down even quicker. Mm. So there's there's various different edges, and I'm not going to go any further no, down no, that no, line with that because yeah. I'm absolutely sure that lots of other nations yeah, yeah. will be will be watching this yeah. podcast as well. Yeah. So you know the, the the when I talk about this being completely different level, it is completely different level. Yeah. You know, it's not like anything that you see in the UK. Yes. For a start, the intensity, the the length of the competition, the skill of the angler, the fact that they are in different places. Mm. You know, you, you've you've got to be so adaptable to to succeed in these, because there will always be one at least of these twenty eight nations that will get it absolutely cock on. Mm. Now that has to be us. Correct. Yeah. Because if it's not us, we're not going to win. No. So it has to be us. So you can't leave any stone unturned. Mm. And again, just going back to what I said earlier, it was the knowledge of 11 years ago working out how to use these baits, how they do work, how you can put them out. Yeah. You know, the, the Romanians were, were very interesting. They come to us at the end. We had, a, we had a big party with them at the end. And they said, we were watching your baiting strategy and we sussed you after 24 hours. We couldn't realize why you weren't spawning. You were, you were just using the throwing stick mm. to begin with. And occasionally we'd put a spawn out. And it's about the area spread as well. When you're fishing for this type of fish, mm. you don't just want to dump a load in OX29 style, as I call it. Mm. You know, it's not about linear fishing. Mm. It's about getting a spread of bait out there so you can get fish comfortable in your area and hold them in your area mm. so you can pick them off rather than getting an yeah. intense feeding period. Because if, if you bait very tight, you might get a full shoal coming into you you'll catch two out of ten and the other eight will bugger off. Yeah, quite. Yeah, I don't yeah, want that no. at all. I want them all to stay there so I can catch eight. Mm. I want to catch eight out of ten. Mm. So this is this is something that the guys, again, with experience, are, are, are learning and, and, and um, are mastering mm. how to apply bait in a certain way at a certain time to maximise what's out there. Mm. Because, you know, let's face it, carp angling is not difficult. You know, carp, no. carp fishing is... is probably one of the easier forms of the sport mm. in that you can spend as much time as you want yeah and eventually someone's going to hang itself yeah of course. so it's not difficult catching fish it's mm. really really easy catching fish but when you're in competitive situation it's not about catching fish it's about catching fish quicker and more efficiently yeah. than everyone else yeah because you've got a finite time to do it <clears throat> and on these sort of events everybody's on a very even playing field you know you're in a straight line yeah. So we need to be able to cast further. We need to be able to, you know, do everything that we do better than yeah. everyone else. Yeah. I think it, you, you you described it to me the other day, and and I, I think it's absolutely true with you know the team that we got. You said we we can we can do it better than everybody else. It's just finding out what we've actually got to do. You know, and that, I think that's absolutely true. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hundred percent. You know, the, the the let's look at the lineup. Yeah. Wayne and Ryan. I mean, you know, both of them are. F hugely successful big fish anglers mm. they've caught some enormous fish but mm. if you look at them on a competitive basis uh, they're two times British champion mm. uh, they've been in the England team for three years now mm. uh, they've had a bronze medal they've now got a gold medal uh, yeah. They've won the British Carp Champs twice. They've been on the podium four times in total. I think they've had a second and a third over four years. They are absolutely at the top of the game. Yeah. Um, Kev Hewitt and Mark Bartlett, <clears throat> you know, again, exactly the same. Yeah. You know, the two times that Wayne and Ryan went on the podium, Mark and Kev were. Yeah, of course. And, and those other two times, they were stood on the on the on the second and the third step as well. Mm. So they are hugely competitive. Um, Carl Pitcher and Harry Charrington, another pair. Um, Harry, I think, we're waiting for the individual world rankings. Um, Harry's our draw bag. Harry's the luckiest angler around. It yeah. doesn't matter who draws. Yeah. If Harry's in the squad, we get a good draw. Right. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, you want an end peg. Uh, I think he's had two end pegs. He had an end peg. In, no, three end pegs. Yeah. So he had an end peg in South Africa. He had an end peg in Spain when we won. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I think South Africa, we ended up fifth. We had, uh, he had an end peg in Serbia. Yeah, uh, and uh, won the section there, uh, and it wasn't quite an end peg here, but it was a little bit of a point, which again gave him a, a, an advantage. So, you know, Harry, I think he's now ranked third in the world individually. Yeah, sure you know, right. he's he's just such a good angler, mm. and this is a pairs competition as well. When you put a good angler with another good angler and they fit together hand in glove, mm. it's just magical. Yeah, and Carl Pitcher is just. He's the best caster in the country. He can cast so far 
yeah. so accurately. He's a monster, though, isn't he? He's, he's unbelievable, man. He, <laughs> he really is. is. And there'll be people that, oh, I can do that. Yeah. All right, then. If Look, I'm going to look down the barrel of the camera now. There's a lot of people say England's a close shop. And they say, how do we get in? <coughs> how can we get into Carp Team England? It is simple. England's not a close shop at all. Just go out and beat me boys. Yeah. If you can beat my boys, I'll look at you. Unfortunately, people yeah. can't beat them. No, no. You know, they, they are so bloody good. I was fishing in Ukraine and... Um, you know, I'm I'm absolutely not a big caster. I can I can hold my own. Mm. Uh, I'm very comfortable at 30 wraps, 120 mm. yards. Uh, I can fish 35. I can cast 40, so I can cast 160. Mm. But I can't effectively fish that far. I can single bait fish that yeah. far. You know, the lads over there they they were baiting up 140 to 160. So that yeah. was our that was our baited spot. Mm. But they're fishing behind it at 180. Carl is fishing 200. Yeah. Fishing 200. Yeah, that's ridiculous, isn't it? When we were in Ukraine, I, I remember we're, 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 we're sort of, we're fishing away and we're doing well in the section and uh, the, the, the rain's coming in a little bit and, and, you know, conditions are getting a bit, you know, when you just, you're halfway through something, it's just bogged down with it. And he went, what do you want me to do with this one huge? They, they call me huge. What do you want me to do with this one huge? Do you want me to chuck it long or shall I stick it on the short spot at 45 wraps? Mm. Yeah, forty-five wraps was the short spot. That's yeah. <laughs> you know, people don't. I don't think they realise until they actually see that, like over something like a field, where you know you're talking two football pitches. Yeah. That's an unbelievable distance. You know, to fish it a hundred yards effectively, it, it, a lot of people can do it now. It's become more of an effective, but it's not easy work. No. To double that distance is un, unreal. It's like diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, the the, yeah. the 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 further you go, the harder it is to improve. Of course, and yeah. and this is why, if you look at the squad now, mm. in comparison with what it was a yeah. few years ago, yeah. you know our lads train. Yeah, and uh, you know you look at Wayne, you look at Ryan, you look at Carl, you look at Harry. Yeah, um, you know Bart's just a big lump anyway. Bart uh, yeah, doesn't need to train; yeah. he's a tractor. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, he'll, he'll just tractor his way through absolutely everything. He's, he's one of them great big bloody John Deere's old parties. Yeah, he's just so naturally on. strong, isn't he? You know, he's yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, we've we've gone from just being fishermen to, to being, and they and they call us athletes on mm. the, you know, on the IOC. We're part of the International Olympic Committee mm. um, grouping. Mm. They're all classed as actual athletes. And when you look at the guys that do very well, they are now physical. Yes, you know this yes. is a physical event. Yeah, and when I when I took over, one of the things that I wanted to bring in was all of these things like David Brailsford with with Team England is a prime example. When he was talking about marginal gains, when England started doing really well at cycling, mm. I took quite a lot of inspiration from him about how to make your team better. Because let's face it, again, everyone can fish; they're all good anglers. But if you put a good angler against a good angler, they're level. We need those extra things. Yes, of course. So, you know, we were we were sleeping, I would say, a, an average of about three to four hours in, in a 24-hour period. Mm. And you'd have to time your sleep as well, depending on when the bites were. So Wayne and Ryan, as a prime example, in their section, they were catching primarily in the night and the morning. Mm. So come the afternoon, that's when you think, right, well, it's calming down a little bit. Um, we'll have a sleep shift, so you have two hours, then back up again. And then you have an hour crossover period where they're both up to discuss what's going on. Mm. And then the other one will get a couple of hours sleep. Mm. But, you know, you run on adrenaline a lot of the time as mm. well. Uh, the it, I was quite relaxed for the first 48 hours in this. I personally got a reasonable amount of sleep for the first 48. Yes. I, I couldn't. I was out for the last night. Um, it was freezing cold, uh, like no sleep, you know, you, food. Yeah. All of these things, you just you neglect yourself and you beat yourself up, mm. and it is just, it just drains you, yeah. absolutely drains you. Yeah. Um, but this is international sport, you that's know. That's right. Speak to um, speak to rugby players. Yes. That's no, right. they come off that pitch and there isn't anything left to give. No. And I feel that when we come off the pitch, if if we've if there is anything left in our tanks, we've not given enough. Yeah. So. Let's 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 talk about the last twenty four hours. Yeah, that because that that for me is unlike any event I've seen. Where where to to summarise it, I've never known an event where an hour and a half after the final whistle's gone, people still don't know who's won because the 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 it was that close. Yes, but just talk us through if you can <clears throat> the last twenty four hours, the build up to that. Where where were we? 
what, what who was in the lead what were they doing what were we doing and what was the game plan right the the, the game plan was to finish well yeah which sounds obvious but actually, you know, these matches are won in the last 24 hours. Yes. From experience, particularly soluble boiler matches, they're yeah. won in the last 24 hours. Yeah. So, you know, you can go off to a racing start, and if you liken it to, um, you know, to football, it's great going 3-0 up in the, in, in the first half. But actually, there's a second half, mm. and someone might score five in the second half. It's the same with the marathon. Mm. You know, if you're running a marathon, what you don't do is sprint the first 1,600 yards because you cool. know that, that you'll... you'll you know, you're going to run out of steam at some stage. Mm. So the tactic to begin with was catch a fish mm. in those first four hours because that is an opportunist that, you know, it may make a difference later. And we all caught within that first day, mm. which was brilliant because what that does is, one, it settles your own nerves. Two, mm. it means you're not going to blank. Three, it sends a little bit of a message out to the other nations that we're here. Mm. But four, and more importantly, what it does is it proves that what we're doing is likely to work and it puts us in that pack at the front. That's right. So this is where we're looking at a running race now. Mm. You know, you don't want to be at the back because if you get caught behind the back, there's too many people that you've got to pass. Mm. You want to be in the group at the front. Now, I don't need to be at the group uh, at the front. I'm not mm. bothered about being at the front mm. because there's more pressure when you're at the front. Yeah. I'm very happy to be third, fourth, fifth. Right. Because we know that we're trotting along quite nicely mm. and we can build. Mm. So then we go into stage two of our game plan, which is the rest of that first 24 hours up to 48 hours mm. where we're building and i suppose this was this was the discussion that i was having with the lads number the first 24 hours is you are setting up your systems mm. and developing your systems mm. the second 24 hours you're um you're testing your systems mm. and the third 24 hours you're running your systems that's where mm. you're taking advantage of, mm. of of what you've done so it was getting the bait in correctly making sure that we were up there so i think um the first way we were on the board it would have been about ninth mm. the second one we had a good night i think we creeped up we might be fifth six there or thereabouts then we had a couple of fish as well and we ended up i think third and by I've, the end of the second day by the end of it was it might have been by the end of the 24 hours i can't right. remember exactly but right. you know a third of the way in mm. we're around about third place which is lovely because mm. you know you're in there you can see what's happening but what i didn't cotton on was moldova being so good yes though their name never came up on the radar no no, no disrespect to moldova no. we didn't you know we knew they exist but we didn't expect them to be up there at all that's right they got a good peg in one section and they really took advantage of that and got a first in the section mm. they'd also just fished immensely well mm. in a couple of other sections and they got a one one two. Yes. Now a one one two is four points. You you're winning on that. You you know, you almost yes. can't be beaten on that. Mm. The only way that you can be beaten is a one one one. So, you know, people have got to do a lot of work to knock you off the podium yeah. to be able to get up to there. And I I just couldn't see forty eight hours in how we were going to be able to take that first place off them. Yeah. As well, there's another complication here that people that, that were following it might know about and, and people that won't won't know about. Mm. But there's 28 nations, but under FIPS rules, you're split into subsections. So the categories were 14. So there were six 14-peg matches going on. Yeah. Now, we didn't meet Ukraine in any of them. The way the random draw worked, Ukraine went in our group. Mm. So as a result, you know, we can't beat them if we're not in a group. Moldova, we'd only got in one section. So right. suddenly they've got a one, one, two. Well, the one and two that they got were in different sections. So we were then totally reliant on somebody else doing well in that section yeah. to take a point off them. Of course. We could only take a point off them in the section that Carl and Harry were in. Mm. They were in the lead. We were second. Right. So it was that bang, 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 yeah. bang. Carl and Harry then shot into the lead they had a run of fish so we've taken a first away from them there so we're very happy yeah. wayne and ryan just accelerated bart and kev were in fourth so we're sitting on six points at the moment mm. again needing some magic we're being mm. beaten by lithuania we're mm. being beaten by romania they were in the worst section though weren't they they were in the scratching section they almost. were in a really flat section it was literally straight with a little bit of a point at each end mm. and there were two teams on each point Lithuania on the first night caught a 16 kilo fish mm. I'm not going to say it was luck but the luck was with them yes because they were good enough to catch the fish but rather than it being a 10 kilo fish or a 4 kilo fish it was a 16 yeah so immediately there's a lot of work to do yeah um, Romania at the other end they got a little bit of a point they fish it well you know they just they just did well yeah and then through the course of that 
the odd team were just catching a big fish now and again, which made a big difference. So South Africa had a 10 kilo fish, France had a nine kilo mm. fish. And these, you know, these are four or five fish when you're fishing for two yeah, kilo fish. Yeah. And we just hadn't caught one. We just one. weren't going it, yeah. yeah. And, and we caught more than anyone else, but we just hadn't caught one. Mm. And it's a little bit about baiting strategy because we knew that the small ones would be the way that we can keep chipping away. Of course. And the discussions we were having, it was, you know, it, it wasn't doom and gloom, but it was just hold your nerve, boys. Because yeah. the more of these other teams that catch one big fish shows the more that there are these odd big fish around. Yes. So rather than being dejected that someone else has now caught an eight kilo fish that we haven't, yeah. you know, they're around. Yeah. We'll, we'll, the law of averages says at some stage we should have that chance. Yeah. If they're catching one and they're catching and they're catching one and we're in a line, at some yeah. stage one will come to us. And lo and behold, on the last night it bloody well did and it was yeah. 12 and a half kilos. Yeah. And it went from, I've just had a little the, the oh, hairs on the back of my arms just shot up then yeah um that that was a, a a pivotal moment for us yeah because that one bit of luck and we were in f- fourth we were in, in that section at that time yeah. yeah and we were in silver and there was no way yeah. unless we and we you know we are a good 10 kilos behind first yeah and we need to get ahead of them yeah and we've been chased by romania we've been overtaken by south africa we've got france snapping at our heels it was literally Keep the faith, boys. Keep the faith, yeah. boys. Keep the faith, yeah. boys. There's the faith. Yeah. And wow. Um, and and it was we we I'll I'll, I'll I'll use the bad language. Um, we've got a little bit of a saying within Carp Team England, mm. and it goes back to a European event in France where I twigged the the fish that we needed to be catching were all in the margins, and we caught them by spraying pellet in the margins. Everyone else was fishing long range. But I found that most of the fish were coming out at eight foot deep. And they were there was a lot of small fish in this lake that again had just been stocked. Now small fish come from fish farms, fish farms are fed on pellet. Mm. They also are very, very keen audible feeders. So the fish farm fish always listen for food before they see it. Because the water's muddy. Mm. So these fish farm fish have got used to hearing a load of pellet hitting the water and as soon as they do that they go there like a shot. Mm. So literally I thought I'm gonna test it in the section that I was fishing in. Started catapulting pellets to eight foot at, at it was like three rod lengths out bearing in mind everyone else is out on the horizon and i'm thinking right i'm just going to keep doing this because these fish they're used to this noise mm. and after about an hour of doing this i saw the first one roll over the peg anyway caught one caught another me and bart were fishing together then he wants to cast 500 million miles mm. away and i'm thinking right i'm fishing really really short on these and we've gone from being last in section to first in section so after we've had a couple, I've passed it up the line and there was one, one angler that was in the team said, I'm not doing that. Uh, you know, I'm fishing long way out. So it's team order, you will do it. And he went, no, 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 no. I've already got eight foot out there. I'm fishing out there. And I went, no, this is now a team order. Mm. Get in, get mm. fishing down the edge. I've said to his partner, you're responsible for this as well. You make sure that you're spraying. You make sure that he puts that out there. Team order, no backing down. If you don't want to do it, I'll get someone in that can do it is your mm. choice decide whether you're doing it or not and you know a bit of heat of the battle people might disagree with the tactics but one of the advantages that I have is I've, I've got the overseeing view of everything mm. um, so I can see how the game's being played just like a manager in football you know mm. when you're on the pitch you perhaps can't see what someone else is doing around the corner and this thing was clearly working anyway he said what do you want me to do do you want me to shit a miracle mm. it's like yes please Yeah. half an hour later he sent me a text through on the on the Rod Squad group just shit me first miracle can't believe it so Brilliant. so that was how we won that European Championships so of course we're there praying to shit a miracle yeah <laughs> and lo and behold I've had a text from, from Kev at whatever time in the morning it is two o'clock in the morning that Kev has done exactly the same thing the miracle has come and we've got those three points that we needed yeah that now allowed us to pass Lithuania in that section and put us into that first place position. And this is like on the last morning. And this is so on the last... It, so it finishes at lunchtime. Finishes at lunchtime, and this is like two o'clock in the morning now. So we've gone wow. from, from a very solid silver, possibly being challenged by uh, the team mm. behind us, where we might get knocked to bronze, but having no chance of catching mm. up and going into gold, to being rocketed into gold play, uh, gold mm. medal position. Yeah. We have now, at this stage, got a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Yeah. Now... I can't tell you, I've just had another little hairs on the back. I don't know oh, if you God, can yeah. pick that up. Look at that, they've just come up. Yeah. There's goosebumps and the old hairs have come up there. Uh, like a 1-1-1 one, one, one is the holy grail. 
Like yeah. It's it's only as far as I can remember, it's only ever been done twice mm. in the history of carp fishing. That's both been by home nations. Mm. So to get a one 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 at world level is it's just unheard of. Yeah. So we've now got a one one one, and we are absolutely scrapping with Moldova, mm. who've then overtaken Carl and Harry. So we've got a one one two. At what time in the morning is this? This is about six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. It's around about the time that I was talking to you. Yes. Because I like I bear in mind at that stage I'd had no sleep. I was a bit confused. I wasn't feeling yeah. very well. We, like we haven't eaten properly. Yeah. And I've got in um, a section Wayne and Ryan are in the lead, but Serbia had a really good night as well. So they were twenty odd kilos ahead. Mm. But the last night dropped really cold. But for some reason Serbia. A, a small pack of or a pack of small fish must have ended up in front of Serbia mm. and they've just caught a shed load of them so we were 20 kilos ahead very very safe in a section they've caught a load we're now eight kilos ahead which is one random big fish or a couple of three small ones yeah so it's like blimey we've got Serbia snapping at our heels there Moldova have just overtaken Carl and Harry yeah. And Romania are snapping at our heels in in B section with Bart and Kev. Yeah. So like, oh my God! You know, to go from being in the race yeah. to being no idea how you're yeah. going to get back in there because we're reliant on someone else. Yeah. And then suddenly the news came through that France had had a really good night as well and had taken a point off Moldova in the section That's in right. that different bit that we know we're yeah. near. Yeah. Um, it's like wow, we're in the lead. No, Moldova in the lead. Oh my God, Serbia are coming. Romania have just passed yeah. us. No, we're back down again. Yeah. And then we needed, just to give us a bit of cushion, we needed a mm. big fish for Carl and Harry. And we sat there talking, and they've had a bite, and it was, I think it was a 2.9 kilos. Mm. So it was nearly enough, but not enough to overtake Moldova. Yeah. Now, that meant that we were 700 grams. That's right. Behind. Yeah. You know, when you think 700 grams is I think a it was that bite. That bite was... I was on the phone to you, and it, it was a FaceTime call, and it was yeah. it was like, uh, and see this phone shaking. And I went, well, are you all right? Because I could see your phone shaking, and I'm on the other end of the line. And you go, no, I just threw up everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I went, well, what's, that? what's going on? And, and he, you, you, you've gone, oh, you, it, uh, uh, the, somebody else has just caught a fish, or, or Harry and Carl have just lost one. I went, oh, God, right. He says, because you, you'd just done a live feed, yeah. which is about 9 o'clock in the morning UK time. So I sent you a text, it, it, message if you can, I can understand if you can't, no yeah, problem yeah. at all. Then you FaceTime it, then you'd been sick. Yeah. And somebody shouted around that Moldova have got a fish on. I was like, oh, Christ. So, And you said, well, we were fish, but we, we've already found out we've just moved back into second. That Moldova yeah. got a fish on. I've gone, oh, never mind. As it stopped, the, 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 Carl Coles had a bite, yeah. and it was that that was two and a half kilo or something. That was it. it. it was, unbelievable. It, it, just, it was so close at the end. And, and, you know, fair play to Moldova. We got whiskey, our spotter, was, was sitting on Moldova. Yeah. Um, and the Moldovan spotter was sitting on us, yeah. Because this is where it was going to be decided, yeah. Uh, you know, as to as to whether Moldova would would beat us or not, yeah. And then we've got we've got to the end, and it was it was surreal at the end because, bearing in mind, we've got a section, we've we're in the lead, but we've been chased by Serbia, yeah, eight kilos away. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! Remember this now. That's in come back to B, you know, yeah. in B section, we've got Carl. Uh, sorry, we've got Bart and Kev in the lead on the section, but being chased by Romania and Lithuania. We've just overtaken Lithuania, yeah. but Lithuania are in second, and I can't remember what the difference was. Yeah. And then in C section, we have got um, Carl and Harry in this neck and neck battle, and it's got to the stage now where whoever ends up with the one one two, the four points, is going to win. He's worth yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. So it's come to the end, and Moldova have said, "We think you've got it." The hoot is gone. Yeah. And we genuinely weren't sure whether we'd got four points or five. You points. were live at this time. I was live. Yeah. 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 So I think we've got four points. Yeah. It's like, have we done it? Is that it? Check if Moldova's got a fish on. Have they not? I think if we stay there, yeah, we've got it. Yeah. Fantastic. And we're, we're six kilos ahead at this point. Six kilos yes. in the one section, two, uh, 700 gram behind in the other section, yeah. and um, like four kilo ahead in the other section. Yeah. So, But one fish either way. So it's like, have we got it? And Moldova said, yeah, yeah, we think you've got it. He's on the radio talking to his guys. Yeah. 
he said, we think it's you. The yeah. French managers there, the judges are there. It's like who's got it? And the, t- and the TV camera turned off. TV cameras. Yeah, I thought, off. oh, we're in here. Yeah. And then somebody that, said, "Why are you live?" Yeah. So, that, so uh, is it Lithuania's got somebody a fish said, on? said, "Serbia's got, got, got a fish on." Yeah. It's like, oh god. <laughs> and Serbia <laughs> hooked a fish two minutes before the end, but we hadn't got eyes on them. We hadn't got eyes on them because we were watching um, Moldova. Moldova. <laughs> so, like, oh my god. They've got a fish on. Yeah. So we had to wait to see if it was landed. So we've got... So on... just so everybody knows, you've got, they've got 15 minutes. Yeah. So they've because got... they, they've hooked it before, the, they have 15 minutes to land it. Yeah. 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 So and they um, we're four kilos ahead in that section. Uh, so I think we were six kilos ahead in that six section. Six kilos ahead. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. So it's like, oh, my God. So it's like, where's Graham? Because Gra- this is A section now. So yeah. Graham's got eyes on Moldova to yeah. make sure they hadn't caught another one up there to take that point off. It's like, yeah. right, get Graham from that end down to the yeah. other end. Let's get him straight so Just so everybody knows, if they get this fish in yeah. and it's above six kilos, we've not won. No, that's it. <laughs> they, we've, we've not won. We've not won. So it's like, right, let's, let's find out what's happening there. Let's find it. So I'm trying to be calm, which yeah. is just impossible. Yeah. It's yeah. just complete confusion. Because got what you want is as soon as the hooter goes, yeah, 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 they've yeah. got it, you know that's yeah. us. But we didn't know, no. So it's like, so I'm talking to the other guys, the Moldovans. Do you know? Yeah. And his spotters on on our our tape. Do you know? He's like, no, I don't know, I don't know. And then he's on the phone and he just looked up and he just went. He looked at me. I can see his face now, and it wasn't in a malicious way, but this is he was the one that told me Serbia got the fish, and he said Serbia. And he looked at me, and all he said oh, was Serbia. God. And my heart dropped out of my ass. Oh, God. It's like, we've been concentrating here. Yeah. We haven't had eyes on Serbia. They're the ones that can kill us. Wow. And I'm just like, oh, my God, get Graham on Serbia now. So yeah. it took a while to get Graham to get onto Serbia. Oh, yeah, just and, for the water. It's, it's not like... 20 yards down there. It's nine it's, kilometres it, long. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> kilometres away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. This, the, where that fish was being played was a good four mile away from me. So oh it's like, who's our, uh, who's our closest man? Graham's on A section. Get him on there straight away. Tell us what's happening. And it was coming through. Yeah, the playing one. It's like, how big is it? I can't see. <laughs> and, and, you know, and literally, there's, there's some pictures. Somebody took some pictures. I don't know who it was, but somebody took some pictures that I've now seen. And and our faces in C section, like Harry, is just in bits. Yeah, I'm stood there with my arms on my head, like eyes out on stalk, just completely shell shocked as yeah. to as to what's going to happen. Yeah, this is the equivalent of being in the lead in the World Cup at 95 minutes, and the penalty is just about to be taken against you. Yeah, it's literally yeah, 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 that. Yeah. These yeah. guys have got the penalty. Yeah. How big is this fish going to be? Are they going to miss it? Are we going to save it? What's going to happen? Yeah. Anyway, it came in, and he went, right, I've seen it. It doesn't look like it's big enough. It's like, are you sure? No, I'm not sure, because I couldn't see it completely, but it doesn't look like it's big enough. It's like, right, are we safe? Yeah, we think we're safe. And then another message came in, Lithuania are playing one. <laughs> it's like, the, hey, uh, yeah. Lithuania are playing yeah. one. So Lithuania in B section now yeah. are playing one, which are behind or in front of us. They, they are. They, they are us. like they're like six kilos behind oh Bart and Kev. God. Yeah, it's like oh god, and then whiskey came back. At, anyway, the long and short of it is that they landed that one, but there wasn't a drama for that because that I I, yeah. I I didn't know so much about that, yeah. and it was almost in, and you know yeah. they come. It's like no, it's not big enough. Right, we're okay, and then whiskey came back up. Whiskey was the guy that was on the yeah. Moldovas in C section. It's like, what's happened? He went, they've just lost one. <laughs> so they oh were playing one gosh. as well. So all three sections were playing fish after the Hooter. Two uh, were, uh, of all which were in contention. All which could have changed the, the, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was amazing. Unbelievable. But, uh, no, it was. Um, it was a, a traumatic. I've never been sick before. Yeah, I've been nervous, yeah. but I've never actually been. I sick I think you before. put a post on Facebook an hour after it went and just said, "Sorry, we we just don't know." No. Y- yeah, and and then obviously an hour and a half after, yeah, it came out, and then you saw the live, yeah. and it was uh, it was unbelievable. It was just incredible. It was that you know the, these things that add to the intensity of it, and also yeah. like you know it makes the memories even more. It's lovely just to if it was ten nil right from the start and we'd scored loads of goals That's and we right. won right at the beginning, it would be it would be great. Yeah. But actually. You know this. 
if this was a boxing match, it was two heavyweights slugging it out, yeah. toe to toe, exchanging blows yeah. for a full twelve rounds. Yeah. We've gone down, they've gone down, we've got up, yeah. they've got up. Yeah. You know, it was just. I, mate, I went to the phenomenal. gym. I, I went to the gym with my lad. It's like an hour before it was sort of finished our time. Yeah. I thought I can't get deal with it. I said, like, oh, "I said, go to." So I said, "Right, let's go, let's go to the gym." Sort of thing, um, and then obviously I w- I'm still talking to you. We're still having FaceTimes, and then all of a sudden, then it's got to the end, and these live streams just seems to be coming every ten minutes, and for like an hour. What, me and Riley is standing on a treadmill. Nothing's happening with these treadmills. We're just standing with my phone up there, looking at these lives constantly. And what I couldn't explain, what, what I was explaining to him is because he's not he's not big into fishing. I said this this is not like the, the football. I said that, that usually within twenty four hours you sort of know who's going to win. You know, the the lead just generally gets longer and longer because they've got the tactics nailed down, they've got the venue nailed down. Yeah. And they know, I, I said, so to have not just two, but potentially four people in the running an hour from the end yeah. is unheard of. Uh, you look at you look at most top line sport now, you know, you look at motorsport, you look at golf, yeah. you look at all of these things. Yeah. And the margin between first and second is always really tiny. It and, is, and, yeah. and it's just getting more and more like that with Anglia now is. because everybody is just getting better. That's right. Everybody is so good at what they do. Yeah, that that's right. To, for for somebody to be a real standout now, there's a, they've either got to have a boatload of luck for some reason, yeah. or they've got a thing, whatever that thing is. Yeah. And you know, there's 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 not many things. No. You know, and it is literally just a case of you've just got to roll your sleeves up and crack on with it. Yeah, obviously we we both know Nick Speed very well. He's, he's a real good friend of ours. Obviously, yeah. he's into commercial match fishing, and you, you always you, you find that more and more with commercial match fishing, where you know a four day event has has ended up having a way back, and yes. actually it's been won by eight ounces, where somebody's weight is five hundred eighty four pound, and someone's yeah. got a five hundred eighty three pound. You know, it's 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 unbelievable. But even even a couple of months previous to that, going into carp fishing more. And it's, as you say, it's becoming more and more frequent. When we yeah. did a, a junior event, the, yes. the YCCC at, at Linear Fisheries, and and even that, you know, that that last morning, yeah, yeah okay, we sort of know who was going to w- win. Well, but all of a sudden, them, yeah, well, all of a sudden, an hour to go, it absolutely kicked off like nobody. And the, we we got guys running around everywhere weighing fish, and we come to the weigh-in, and everybody's sort of standing around going, yeah. "Anybody yeah. idea is what?" Yeah, did, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. It, it, well, look at look at the ladies' world champs. You know, uh, yeah, you, absolutely. You, you, yeah. Ukraine won that, but we were we were one fish away from winning that. Yes, and equally, the people that were in third were one fish away from getting silver. So, literally, two yeah. two fish for two different countries could have changed that as well. It's so so close. Look at the British Carp Champs. You know, the finals of the British Carp Champs. Yes. We, we you know we filmed that for on the bank. Um, of course, and and just seeing that Sunday night, yeah, midnight to sun. Um, sorry, Saturday midnight to Sunday twelve o'clock. So that last twelve hours. Yeah. Five different teams took the lead in the yeah. British Carp Angling Championships yeah. finals. With the Ladies World Championships for the individuals, 114 kilos, which is 250 odd pounds. Between first and second for individual, there were 25 grams over 250 pounds. So there was an yeah. ounce separating me. You've got 250 pounds, I've got 250 pounds, and one ounce. That's how yeah. close it was. That's now ridiculous. that is ridiculous margins. Yeah. Yeah. And, and UK Champs match fishing this year. Um, six anglers went in on the same points going in the last round this year. Yeah, angling is so tight. You wrote right. you wrote an article recently on this as well. I did, yes. Yeah, for yeah. was it for what, Angling Times? Angling yeah, Times, yeah. The, yeah. Huge views column in Angling Times, just about how how the margin for winning now is getting smaller and smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller, and that's because anglers are just getting better and better and better. Yeah, so unbelievable. Well, Luke, thank you for that update. It, it's brought back some memories for me. I know it has for you. I can see the, <laughs> the goose pimples on your arm again. Yeah. Um, we're, we're all incredibly proud of you and the team, and you know, in the men's and the women's and everything they've done uh, achieve this year. I know we'll do just as well again next year you know we can't better it much more but yeah we'll uh, well we're world number we're, one we're, now we're, as well we're world so. number one now so yeah, yeah um we will we'll keep the trophy here for 12 months and hopefully yeah. you know after france next year it'll just come back again for another 12 months absolutely. so uh rob thanks for that mate it's, it's been absolutely brilliant reminiscing i know it's uh, i can see the hairs on your arm started up again so it's been really good to uh you know to to memory uh to have that uh, <coughs> memory shared again uh I can see you bought in some little bit of a memorabilia that we can keep here. Yes. Do you want to show us what we've got? Well, 
I have a couple of nice little things for a start. Obviously, we have to have an official pass to get in. So beautiful. That is my official pass yeah. uh, from the World Championships. Yeah. Uh, so we can have that one on the old memorabilia shelf somewhere. Yeah. And I've also got my England cap. Yeah. So we do. Everybody that that fishes for England is officially capped by me. Uh, so wow. that is my official England cap. Not only that, but it's signed by the whole of the squad. As Look well. at that. So there we go. One England cap. Wonderful. Signed by the whole team. You are so, a star. Well, there uh, we we'll we'll treasure that for a long, long time. So we'll put that there, and that's where it'll stay forever. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say how, how immensely proud we are of you uh, and the team. You know, the, both the men and the women. But it was an extraordinary year. Extraordinary year. We we can't improve on it much more. But you know, we'll we'll we're world number ones now, uh, yes. and, and the men's and the women, uh, and we're world yeah. number one in the women. So yeah, we 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 really excited for next year's events uh, where we can both. Both golds back for men and women. Youth next. Let's let's, uh, let's get youth, the youth yeah, category. Yeah, we, well, we're already we're there. already planning on that, aren't we? So yeah, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things to come. But mate, mate, congratulations. We're really, really proud of you. And uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining an Outcast special edition. And we will catch up with you again real shortly. Thanks for listening to the Outcast, the podcast from Outlaw Pro, the ultimate angling experience. Remember to follow us on social media for updates and information on future guests. See you next time.